welcome to another inspectionary whiteboard discussion. Happy to have you here and looking forward to it. Today we're going to talk about graduating from qualitative uh, to quantitative RBI and everything in between and after. So uh, let's start out with uh, farming a basis and a context. So our standard understanding of RBI as far as approaches go, is there are semi-quantitative approaches, there are qualitative approaches, and the standard view is that qualitative takes less effort, less cost, less time, and while notionally this is true and often is, sometimes it's not the case. Um, so let's talk about qualitative a little bit more. Uh, qualitative by its very nature is opinion heavy. We're not going to the data as much, the databases and everything. We're using opinions of people involved in the process. Um, and we've seen through experience that qualitative studies are uh, usually less structured, less systematic, and depend a lot on opinion. Versus semi-quantitative, and, and let me start out with explaining that or admitting that there's still going to be some judgment in semi-quantitative that just uh, is determined by the amount of subjectivity involved. Um, it is more data intensive. We're actually going out, getting the data, using that data. Um, there are typically more um, uh, systematic uh, work processes involved as there should be in the semi-quantitative or the more quantitative studies. Um, there's also this division of labor within these approaches, actually both approaches, but I think you see it more in the, in the semi-quantitative and the more quantitative approaches where you have people coming in from, for example, from operations, or you may have a fixed equipment reliability engineer there, uh, you may have process engineers there, and of course you will have inspection and corrosion materials um, a specialist. Um, but the more quantitative studies uh, provides metrics that you can do more trending and more benchmarking from. So when it comes to performance, most owner operators like the results of semi-quantitative studies over qualitative studies. The issue is the perceived cost to get there. I think another really important thing you need to think about long term is sustainability. But something that should always be top of mind is the value you're receiving from it. And I'll always go back to saying motive means a lot. And I highly recommend you do not do RBI with top of mind is save money. If anything, go at it with optimize everything, optimize resources, optimize efforts, and let risk drive the decisions you make as to how much effort you need to put into it. Which is a great segue to the next part of this discussion and that is consider qualitative and semi-quantitative in the same model. So a lot of people believed early on with RBI, and, and it's totally understandable that if I've got a plant with 5,000, 10,000 uh, various pieces of equipment and piping circuits, wow, wouldn't it be better if I do an initial screen uh, from a qualitative perspective, and then whatever items come up above a certain risk level, then we'll do those in a more quantitative or semi-quantitative method. Makes sense. The hazard is what happens if those are not, those two platforms, those two risk platforms are not calibrated against one another. We saw this years ago in the early API RBI user group project back in about 97, 98, where one of the refinery operators gave us the information for about 200 pieces of equipment in a unit we did a fully qualitative study on that, those 200 pieces of equipment, then a fully semi-quantitative study on those 200 pieces of equipment. And an eye-opener for us was that some of the equipment um, wound up higher risk in the semi-quantitative study, and I think it was because of, this, because of the systematic nature of the semi-quantitative study over the qualitative study, which causes one through a critical thinking process, a structured, systematically uh, enabled 
critical thinking process to ask more questions to get it a better answer. And so some of those items wound up higher risk after semi-quantitative than they did after qualitative, which was a bit unnerving, but it was a, a big eye opener because the two platforms weren't calibrated against one another or reconciled against one another. So one of the things that became clear, and again, this goes back to, to something I call uh, management by exception, uh, uh, keeping things as simple as possible, because we have to look at work processes to maintain these programs later, right? Are they going to be sustainable? Um, are they going to be valuable? If they are valuable, then you want to sustain them. We want to sustain them. So here's the idea uh, or the concept I'd like to present. As we know in any kind of RBI, don't be afraid to use assumptions, but make sure you have the right people vetting those assumptions so that you're reasonably conservative. Again, if you're using tools with Bayesian logic, you want to be careful because they're going to debit you for lack of knowledge and credit you for knowledge. So they have a lot of conservatism built into them already. And we want to make sure we don't get too overly conservative. But that means we're going to have to have very knowledgeable people helping us make those decisions, right? And not just generally knowledgeable, but specifically knowledgeable as to how that particular unit and or that equipment are operated. So we've got to do that. We need to understand the model we're using because not all inputs are equal. Some inputs will have a bigger impact on the output than others. It's good to know that. Again, document your assumptions. This is where I go to management by exception. A lot of times, meaning well, we will overcomplicate things. I'm a big fan of guidelines and let's keep it somewhat higher level um, and then um, document any assumptions and document any deviations, right? And so in this concept that I'm going to tell you about right now is if we start out with a semi-quantitative or more quantitative platform, then I can actually treat it like a more qualitative approach and I can use more sweeping assumptions. Uh, and then knowing that those assumptions are going to be slightly conservative, I can go on ahead and run my calculations and then let the risk tell me where I need to go get more data. The beauty of that is everything's in the same platform. Everything's in the same risk matrix so that I'm not comparing apples and oranges. And when a piece of equipment needs to, so to speak, be moved up the priority in priority or in criticality, and I need to go get more data because the risk is telling me now, hey, if I don't go get this more data, I'm going to have to replace it with another material or I'm going to have to spend a bunch of money on it. But before you do that, you want to go back and look at your data. If you've done a good job of documenting your assumptions, you can say, oh, that field is driving this or that parameter is driving this risk. That was an assumption. Well, let's just get some more data first and let's see how that improves our uh, risk result. So go get the data, rerun the calc. Now the, that or those pieces of equipment have been moved up the ladder into a more uh, semi-quantitative or quantitative RBI state and you stayed within the same platform. You weren't mixing uh, matrices, risk matrices or risk models. Everything stayed in the same platform. You used assumptions to make it more qualitative. So I wasn't spending so much time going to get all this data. You used a team of highly qualified and experienced people to vet those assumptions. You used them. You ran the calcs. Now you're seeing that a few of those are saying, I need to go get more data. So you go get the more data, you put it in, everything's in the same platform. You avoid the, um, the confusion that it can occur, especially with management. We are trying to compare two, um, two different risk matrices, risk results in two different risk matrices. Everything's in the same platform and you just graduate things up, graduating from qualitative 
to more quantitative RBI, all within the same platform. The, the biggest challenge I see there is documenting assumptions, managing those through the process, flagging those pieces of equipment. Are those, um, those parameters where uh, assumptions were used? And then once you understand what the risk drivers are and you identify those assumptions as driving that, then it says, hey, I need to go get more information. That's gonna help me fine tune things. That's gonna give me credit for my Bayesian updating and I can keep moving forward. Again, top of mind too, in addition to having a great model is understanding people have to use this in a work process and you wanna make it sustainable. So keep it simple, manage your deviations. We have the technology available to us to automate a lot of this too and make sure it's all captured. Um, anyway, those are just a few thoughts on how we can work within the same platform and move from more qualitative to more quantitative RBI to help us manage our equipment more effectively so that we can really optimize our programs. We're not overspending, we're not underspending, we're not hurting anyone, we're not damaging the environment. We're doing a good, reliable, responsible job of managing our assets. Thanks a lot for sitting in on this whiteboard discussion and please send us any of your comments, suggestions, whether you agree, disagree, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot and have a great day.